Descartes. So what Descartes, René Descartes decided to do was rather than go out to the club on a Friday night, he took a look at this polynomial and he said, you know, when you do the P over the Q, that tells you what are all the possible rational zeros. But how many did I have there? Like, how many total numbers did I have? Like six, probably, six or something. So if you do the positive and the negative, that's like possibility of 12, right? Well, what's another way that you can help yourself out determine the, what types of zeros you have? And what Rene found out was that when you look at the number of sign changes of the polynomial, that tells you how many real positive, that tells you how many real positive zeros you have. Now notice though, these zeros could be real or they could, I'm sorry, they could be rational or irrational. The rational zero test only talks about rational numbers, doesn't talk about irrational numbers. However, let me just give you an example. What if you do, what if you find out that one is a zero, correct? Would you test the positive two as a zero? No, because Descartes' rule of signs says there's only one real positive zero. So once you find one zero, you know, once you find one positive real zero, that's it. You know there's no more positive real zeros, right? Then what he said was, well, what about if I do f of negative x? What that's going to do is that's going to tell me the number of negative real zeros. So you have to plug in negative x into this. Now, we did this. Does anybody want to answer the trivia question? What other thing did we do when plugging in negative x? What else do we do when we plug in negative x? That also tells us to check for symmetry, right? Remember, if you plug in a negative x, you get the exact same function. It's symmetrical about the y-axis. If you plug in f of negative x and you get the exact opposite of the function, it's a metro about the origin. And just remember, any negative number raised to a positive is always going to be positive. So therefore, this turns out to be still a positive 2x to the fourth. Any negative number raised to an odd is now negative. Negative times negative is positive. Positive, now it's a negative. Negative times negative, positive. So now, if I check my number of sign changes, positive to positive, Positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative. Do you guys see that there's three sign changes? Yes? So there are, since there's three sign changes, that means there's three real negative zeros. It doesn't tell you what the zeros are. It just tells you how many there are. But why is this important? Because now we can determine how many complex, if there are complex, um, or not. So the way that I like to do this is let's look at all the possibilities. Ah. Let's look at the possibilities of our zeros. Now, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, the degree tells us what? There are four zeros. How many zeros we have, right? So fundamental theorem of algebra, we know there is a total of four zeros. Total four zeros, no matter what. Correct? Now, besides that, if, it, if there, we could have positive zeros, negative zeros. So we could have positive, negative. These are real. And if it's not real, then it's complex or imaginary, right? Whatever you want to think about them as. So how many real zeros did we say there was? One, always, right? That's it. 1. However, I forgot to mention this here. Remember, I, there's one other thing I told you guys to write in. It's always 3 minus an even number. So it's actually 3 or 1. You always take the number of sign changes minus an even number. For any of them. Doesn't matter. Here, you can't subtract 2 and still have a positive. You can't have negative 1 zeros, right? So you always subtract an even number which I forgot to say. I forgot about that. The number of sign changes, you always take the number of sign changes minus an even number. Here, the number of sign changes is 1. But I cannot subtract a 1 from, I cannot subtract an even number from 1. So it just remains as 1. Here, I can subtract an even number 2 from 3. So it's 3 or 1 real negative zeros. So 
the number of negative zeros are 3 or 1. Why this is important? We know, ladies and gentlemen, that the total number by the fundamental theorem of algebra has to add up to 4. So if there's one real, three negative reals, how many complex? Zero, one, two. Zero. If there's one real, one real positive, one real negative, how many complex? Two. 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 Yeah, they're, these are both possible scenarios. Descartes' rule of science doesn't tell you which scenario is going to be possible. It just kind of tells you what different types of scenarios will be possible. That's it.